we saw the day shall come. Uh, Which was the, the, uh, the, the thing is, people say the latest Chris Morris, but it's only a second. Yeah, so it's the, quite the second Chris Morris film. People were like, Chris Morris's return. And I was like, I guess, yeah. I guess it's, we won. If a man runs in and then runs in again 10 years later, I guess like, oh yeah, he's returned. Yeah, because Four Lions was nearly 10 years ago. Yeah. It's it was a long time ago that he seems to he seems to take his sweet ass time. So people that don't know, the heady days of the nineties. Uh, Chris Morris is a well, he's always described as an agent provocateur, which I'm not sure is entirely fair. But he's a satirist who did a very famous uh, was it radio show initially, but, uh, and then a TV series about like a new satire, and then they just satire on the very concept of news programs called Brass Eye, which, which probably has the most famous episode of satire ever with a Peter Geddon episode. Beautiful, which, a which, personal favourite of all of us. Which has stayed more relevant than I think even they were expecting at the time. Massively so. I mean, it's it's weirdly enough probably more relevant than even Four Lions, which. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in, yeah, and then he did probably considered like seminal political black comedy. Comedy that follows four British Muslims as they become radicalised. It's it is a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, and then ten years later, he follows up with "Come either pre-radicalized or aren't radicalized, depending on your depending position. on your yeah." There is, the basic plot is a uh, is it Mo- Mo- Moses Al Shabazz? Moses Al Shabazz. Real name uh, is actually like three really English names, like David something Burke, isn't it? At the end, Boris Jeremy Bentham no, is a mentally unsettled, shall we say, gentleman. I think that's reasonable. Who runs a tiny farm out for essentially a shed in uh, Miami, which I think is a weird place to set a film. A I don't know why. Place. Do you reckon, I was thinking about this afterwards, on the walk back, I was like, do you reckon they did it purely so they could have like that spring break stuff at the beginning? Cause oh, not, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of another reason. Or maybe there's a big FBI headquarters that that's actually there. I don't know. The entire film yeah. was shot in the Dominican Republic. So What? Yeah, weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that, was a, that was a discovery for me when I came across that. It's cheaper, I think, because the... Uh, I imagine anyway, it's cheaper than Miami. Oh, yeah. uh, but yes, there is a massive... F- that FBI building is really there. Oh. The stupidly large FBI office in Miami. Uh, yeah, so Marshant Davis plays Moses Al-Shabazz, who is essentially... He, he thinks he can blow up cranes with his mind. Yeah, he's, he thinks he's got a... He's called the Star of Six. It's a it's a cult worship six figures, including like slave it's, rebel think... general Toussaint, Black Santa, and Allah. The six stars has a picture of each one of them, and when they cro- do the, the six star cross, they uh, which is really hard to do, by the way. I tried to mimic it. Uh, when they do the six star <laughs> cross, they say each of their names in turn, and the Allah picture is just the words of Allah in Arabic, which I thought was Well, they can't nice. draw it. No, I know. That's, that's, why, that's what I really liked, is that they were clearly pseudo-respectful. Is it Black Jesus? Black, no, or just normal just Jesus? Just normal Jesus, I saw. There's just a normal Jesus. and uh, oh, Well, he's like a Middle Eastern Jesus, obviously. He's not like white, uh, flowing, goldy oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus original. Yeah, yeah. Not new Jesus. No, not and not black Jesus either. So, not, yeah. not Jesus Crystal. Yeah, so, you know, you could say he's more. You know, the Star of Six is more pure in that way. But yeah, they travel around in a rickety old school bus. Uh, he has three other followers, one of which is his brother-in-law. One is Farmer Africa. Sorry, Farmer Africa. Farmer yeah, because it's a farm, and his daughter, who's yeah. about six. Oh, and that and that guy they meet at the shop. Sorry, who they uh, the, the he joins as well. Oh yeah. And so yeah, they 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 do nothing really. I mean, they farm very poorly. They do press ups in a line and they're not really threatening anyone they just believe a bunch of they believe in race war but they believe only in race war when they can can win but it's all very distant and also non-violent so lots of like really conflicting beliefs yes and you it's thought uh, that this made them less threatening perhaps or less uh the, the word would most be authentic i guess but yeah. Or realistic, I suppose. And uh, since seeing it, my views on it have somewhat softened. Oh, good. But I, I did, I still do vaguely feel that the the central figures, while I almost felt like they were sort of overly done to be harmless, I if you know, what, to, I... to be sort of almost too comical. But then I suppose it would then, as they are being drawn further and further into a plot by the FBI to essentially invent a terrorist attack involving them. I suppose it does make it more of a... That, it makes it like feels... a tragedy, I think is how I describe Yeah, more it. of a like, tragedy if they, as they like, are almost pure innocence. Yeah, exactly. They Yeah, because especially Moses, I mean, it, one, of his fo- one of his followers harbours genuinely violent tendencies towards everyone, but specifically the white man. Yeah, uh, but even like even his is just kind of like, it, most of it is like carjackings or, or putting worms in sandwiches. Oh, sandwiches, that's it. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. It's all like really low-key or like really, yeah, sort of yeah. like generalised and childish. But yeah, no, the, I, I agree. I mean, they're never, even when they're presented with guns, they, that the fam- the quandary is of the film is that they don't want them, so. No, because the, 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 the running theme of the film is that the FBI are looking for a big takedown, basically. They want to invent the new Bin Laden for 
glory basically and they find this guy on facebook live who's doing weird black identity extremism they sort of the way that they describe it is if we give him the guns then that means he won't get them he won't get real ones so they kind of almost goad him into being a terrorist to then arrest him for being a terrorist yeah which i mean shockingly for me at least because again i have i didn't really know that this was a side of american law enforcement but this actually happens and this happened in famous situations and yeah the fbi have been doing this for years yeah completely completely mad to me like i think yeah the, the, i I, had learned, I listened to the guy who plays moses talk about it and he was saying of like the various and even going back to like the the 80s and stuff you know there's there's precedent for this and i was like this is horrible yeah the majority of their victims that they get in this are loners they are u- almost universally poor ethnic minorities that are essentially goaded and almost it's so basically the fbi has an informant who essentially is just contacting this person over and over again telling them oh we'll give you money if you commit an act of terror we'll give you money if you commit an act of terror don't you want to be part of something brother come with us we'll you know and they basically they do it all for them they they tell them where to go to pick up these fake weapons or to meet these fake terrorists and then eventually decide that enough's enough and they just arrest them for so in a way following their own instructions like you said the, the economic factor really makes it quite terrifying because you, and i think that's what they really nailed in the day shall come is that he really only wants the money because his life's being you know his, his life's getting torn apart for a lack of money because his farm doesn't produce anything of value um, yeah he's 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 only really in it to get the money to basically pay his rent there's obviously the star of six who are being tagged along by the fbi there are there's a their landlord whose name i can't remember now Ruben. who is yeah, who's being tagged along by the miami, miami police department reza who's a pedophile who is being protected by the fbi in exchange for various services face phone jacker plays reza the pedophile not quite seen stealing but not far off i mean when he when when they walked into the donut shop and he was there <laughs> real fucking highlight great fake fake isis, ISIS shakes there's a great moment where uh, it's revealed that Moses Al Shabazz believes that IS is the tax return guys. IRS, he thinks the it's IRS. The, he thinks it the IRS, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is amazing. There's yeah, there's loads of really great moments, and I think I re- what I really enjoyed about this and what allowed me to give it a pass for perhaps some of the things that it lacked in comparison to Four Lions was it was just doing like the six stars with like the six different like radically different people and things like that. Like it was doing things I've just not never seen on screen before, and in a really fun way. Um, the horse that starts talking, fucking brilliant. I mean, uh, why quite about the horse? The horse only speaks once. Yeah. <laughs> d- during a scene of intense dis- distress and like despair for for Moses. Yes, no. It, and I, then, and also, might not have existed at all at some points. Well, indeed. And the horse is also um, a reference to one of the real things that happened, isn't it? Because you told me that that's what the Chicago, the Liberty City guys, wanted to do. Yes. They thought their horses were key to toppling the Sears Tower. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of it's it's quite heavily based on this actually because they were the Liberty City Seven were also based in Miami and they are also a bizarre oh, really? religious cult. Yeah. Oh, of course, Liberty City. Uh, yeah. They kind of didn't really have any obvious beliefs that made much sense um they were kind of i guess you could say they were kind of like african-american identity extremists but that's if you look into that that's that's as a concept has been pretty much invented as a threat by the fbi as well Well, Um, it's 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 not really a thing it's like something that's absorbed by moses and his gang as well just from like the periphery of politics that they know it's just these particular people themselves were there's about seven of them most of them were mentally ill in some description uh, i think it was them that they had this clever idea that the inf- the informant the fbi informant sorry was saying them oh you know we'll offer you this much money and they were like no we're not interested and then eventually he went oh i'll offer you a quarter of a million dollars to do this which is a obscene amount of money to any at any at anyone to anybody especially the poor you know poor poor people from you know the rundown part of miami but at the trial i think this is what chris morris said in the interview uh the prosecutor the defense asked this informant you offered these people a quarter of a million dollars correct and he went oh that was a code what, and they went, what do you mean it's a code it, it actually meant fifty thousand dollars so okay well who knew this code he went well i did did anyone else no it was because the system was completely stacked against them from the start like the fbi just making it up as they go along essentially well, that's what i really liked about this is there's this like uh this lawyer who really wants a good case um and he's like the only place that will take these people is like the fourth circuit in virginia and i and i looked into this and there is there are obviously actually like courts that are more likely to convict 
debunk terrorism, um, which is insane. Like, like the idea that you'd have to like, yeah, because they plan to extradite him from Miami and then re-arrest him in Virginia so that he can then be tried there, even though nothing of it happened in Virginia. And I was like, yeah, none is... of it even none of it even happens anyway. Exactly. This is this is like the worst excesses of of like the state system. Is is yeah, it's like a, that's what it's like a beautiful fucking cocktail of just like insane state overreach, and then also like weird like state level judiciary it was horrible like, like, like glory hunting yeah massively individual like, but, glory but hunting cre- and creating budget. your own glory like, yeah. yeah and sort of hunting from a bigger budget oh. with this constant need to be seeing to be doing something about the war on terror speaking of which so when oh. there aren't that many terrorists Indeed. and especially not like many homegrown like i mean what yeah we had like the unabomber and timothy mcveigh like the guy from the oklahoma bombings well i mean i think i think recently perhaps american domestic terrorism has well, somewhat true. taken off slightly true and i guess if we count shooters as well but they, they're not they're not after shooters they're not after bloody pretentious no they're not stopping <laughs> yeah they, they haven't stopped the you know the el paso walmart shooting or the synagogue shooting in you know pittsburgh last year or that thing in charlottesville you know they don't stop that they're too busy monitoring four people doing press yeah, ups in they're too busy <laughs> goading mentally ill ethnic minorities into thinking that they're blowing up a golf course when actually they're just holding an empty box yeah and as a, as a way to communicate that this is happening in the world today, I think it's a bloody brilliant film. I will say as well, I think we've talked enough about like the Star of Six. Um, the FBI, the portrayal of the FBI in this is fucking incredible. Anna Kendrick and that perfect young asshole who like plays off her is a great, and their boss and that lawyer like as a perfect like sort of like quad there of just scum and villainy. The you know sort of ruthless, <laughs> like promotion hungry like bureaucrats in suits or they're basically like frat boys just trying to just basically trying to look, make themselves look good yeah it's just like you said it's all about glory like it doesn't and matter. it's it's not even necessarily incompetence so much as it is like a complete lack of morality yeah exactly like there's like they can't get to like a, a good outcome because their moral compass is so fucked that there's no way they can achieve the stopping of actual crime that's a problem with the uh the, the mypd they've got a computer system called compstat and that was originally designed by this in this in mad sort of computer science cop back in the 80s and the idea was you can map where crimes happen but it's now become this kind of monster that means that you have to somehow be arresting more people constantly to show that you're taking action on crime but you also have to have less crimes being recorded in areas to show that crime's falling that not only plays against basic like rea- like reality but also human nature <laughs> it's politics baby uh, that's well i like, mean that's, that's yeah a great, it was a great combination of politics and like technology isn't it as well because like all yeah. of this is made possible through these like horrible like little like yeah like you know at one point there's like seven screens on just this little farm it's like what a yeah waste they've of got like money like a surveillance plane that all the swat guys have body cameras they've got like drones it's just the surveillance state gone mad yeah it's amazing. but to the point where they're inventing their own targets to justify their own existence and I don't know whether this happens in in Britain or not. It hasn't been reported on, which either means it doesn't happen or we're much better at it. A better version of it happens. It's probably much less. And I, I, have, I, well, I have to believe. But yeah, I think this is really like the the worst excesses of like post Patriot Act America. Yeah, <laughs> it, I do wonder if that's perhaps part of why I felt the film didn't land with me particularly as much as Four Lions did, and whether it's because I'm not an American. Oh, you had this about Man and, of Steel as well. Remember, you wanted to see a, a home base <laughs> getting destroyed. Yeah, like I'm not. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of Man of Steel. Uh, like you know, I'm not an American. You know, I'm not very likely to be targeted by the FBI. So maybe that's why it didn't hit as hard, just because of a simple lack of these yep. people aren't me. Whereas compared with Four Lions, you know. I am in this country and could know these people. Yeah, definitely. And no, you know, no, yeah, definitely. No, I, I do agree entirely. And I think the this was more outlandish because of that. I, I compared it a lot to Sorry to Bother You. We all know call center capitalism is and like capitalism at large, depending on who you are, isn't great in its current in its current forms. And so that was like that was telling me something I kind of already knew and was just playing around with it and having a good time. Like this, like actually opened my mind to something. Yeah, it just was completely under my radar, and that's great. And the same with Four Lions, I guess, with Four Lions. Like, that was a very pertinent issue that everyone knew was happening, and it just never been approached in that way. A difference there. I'm not sure how well this will age as well, like, because I, I, I guess the Trump administration has already very much diverted from this sort of homegrown terrorism thing. Like, it cares about foreign relations on a large scale, like, you know, Turkey, Syria, North Korea, Russia, etc. China, specifically. Yeah, I mean, but it's been on the hand. The FBI can't be pivoted to do that. No, I know that's what I mean. So therefore, and I guess if they must I, feel quite it, obsolete. Yeah, but I mean, I don't. I must say, I don't know how much under a you know sort of like Obama and Bush, how much of a shit 
they publicly gave about domestic terrorism. Bush probably a fair bit, Bush, but yeah, like I, I, n- these things didn't really make the news outside of their local areas because domestic terrorism is never really considered to be a thing in America. And if anything, you could say it's probably more likely to happen now because of their hysteria around anti-fascist organizations. The increasing racial tensions with the election of Donald Trump. You might be right. Yeah. Yeah, it just didn't feel like a very Trumpian film. Like, I, I don't know. I think it's because we associate jo- Trump's policies with being loud, brash, and kind of stupid. Yeah, I guess there is an whereas, entire domestic scene that he's affecting as well. Yeah, whereas this is more... Like it's state level. It's, it's, it's evil, but it's smarter. Yeah, it's like, it's not bombastic for an in- foreign policy. It's a essentially one regional office of the FBI. Yeah trying to make, you know, one boss trying to make it he can retire with a couple of decent collars under his belt and then go to Nobu with his wife. Yeah, that, yeah, you're right. I guess that's the thing. It's like the banality of evil, isn't it? Like these people are, it's just like creating a problem and solving it, but they are actually destroying people's lives in the process. The ending of this film, I guess obviously it's been spoiled throughout, but this is the, the big the big reveal. And if you've watched Four Lions, you'll, you'll know how this goes down. I mean, the thing is, if you hear about the film and you also then vaguely Google anything that happens, you know how these things end. Well, indeed. They only really end in one way. Indeed. And yeah, there's a. I think there's the sucker punch in this is really horrible in the best way. Uh, and it's made all the worse by his family being present and his. The, just the, the vulnerability on Moses Al Shabazz's face during that entire scene is really heart wrenching. And I think that's yeah. what really compounded it. And I think that's why I, I, I rate him being less threatening than the, the terror, you know, the cell in Four Lions is because yeah. it made this moment all the more tragic that you couldn't have had if he was even a bit, if he had a bit more teeth to him. Yeah, um, no, I, see, I can I can see that. Um, I do think Marshall Davis did very well. I think he did a lot of, I think it, it would have been very easy to play Moses Al Shabazz as just a fool, as like a clown. Yeah, well, he wears a shower curtain, so yeah. I, full, and the full tricorn res- hat. Exactly, full respect for making him as nuanced as he is, and he is quite nuanced. I mean, to be fair, I think he kind of rocked the shower curtain, but oh, yeah. you know, that's just me. No, um, and I think Anna Kendrick did very well as well. I think that, you know, there is a bit of the film where she sort of has a wobble, and she sort of goes like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't do this. But then she almost turns, like, she basically meets him, and she's like, this is nonsense. But then she's like drawn back into the FBI offices, and then she goes all, and then she just goes back again. She's like, ah, no, actually, fuck him. Yeah, no, it's, hers is perfect because again, it's sort of like just cowardice in action, and like, yeah. like really banal cowardice. Like, oh shit, I just really need to appease my boss, and I will destroy this man who I have a genuine connection with to do so. And then right, and right at the end, she kind of again is like, well, hang on, because eventually they are just going to have him killed. I think it's easier. The thing is, when they kept saying that, I think someone described the film as that ending as being like exploitative of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I'm not sure if exploitative is the right word. I think it's definitely invoked the idea of yeah, not at all. I mean, if anything, it supports it. Like, it has that really racist police officer who, like, espouses the view, you know, that the, the Black Lives Matter activists believe police have and, you know, demonstrably do. I mean, because there is also that discussion in the FBI offices that they can't go after oh. African American targets because the police have fucked up the political things. Yeah, and then, like, the, they've fucked up the optics. Yeah, I love that so much. It's like he's like, you gotta go for brown. You can't go for black. Like there's buzzwords, and yeah, there's like you said, there's Nerf guns flying around. And it's just office politics. Like there's like bitching, and that's what Anna Kendrick does really well. Is like she's so petty and horrible, and and like and yeah, just so and again like, but but open to like that brief flash of morality that really makes her question everything. I felt that the office stuff with the FBI was very. I know it's always invoked, but like it's very sort of uh, the thick of it and veep and stuff. Yeah, massively so. Like it's very much like I think because I know he did get a tour of the building, <laughs> and I think he, when when he got there, uh, he said that a uh, his sort of liaison officer, his handler, came out and was like, "Well, I've got, and took him and took him into like a floor that wasn't being used," mm. and said, "Oh, I mean, I've just googled you, and you're you're a satirist," <laughs> and he was like, "Oh no," and then he's like, "Well, I hope you're not you're not going to be mean about us because we're giving you this tour. We don't have to." And he's like, "Oh, okay, yeah," and he kind of didn't want to say, "No, I won't be," so he just kind of didn't really say anything. Perfect. He just kind of said, "Oh, you know, it's like." about i'm really interested in like office interactions and like workplace politics and she's like oh, okay that's fine <laughs> and then led him round, and now he's got and then he got all this material to portray the fbi as essentially frat boys okay I, can, I think that's what made it so again like stuff i hadn't seen on screen before like it felt really different and at points it was really cringeworthy but it was also like you couldn't i couldn't take my eyes from it i was like this is perfect like everyone in it was a was a shithead yeah like the because they've the fbi has a, a syrian guy that they're basically threatening with deportation unless he works for them as like sort of undercut but he he plays the terrorists he plays the fbi's terrorists <laughs> and he's not particularly fond of doing it and there's a bit where he's mainly there just complaining about not getting his expenses paid quick enough 
And then he gets a phone call from Moses. Moses has now decided that he needs to get nuclear materials about about three quarters of the way through the film. He's like, oh, I need them. Not because... He he kind of thinks that the... So his landlord says, I need nuclear material. And he goes, why? And his landlord's like, to build a ray gun. And everyone's like, oh, and they're all like, okay, fine, whatever. We love... Ray guns are cool. And then he... And so Moses rings up this sheikh who's been set up with him by the FBI as like a ISIS commander and says, do you have any nuclear materials? And then he finds out it's for nuclear weapons. Yeah. But the informant does a little dance when he finds out that Moses wants nuclear weapons because it means he's going to get arrested. So he's going to get a commission. Oh, so horrible. But yeah, he does. I remember. Like, I'd forgotten about like, that. Law enforcement for profit. Lovely close off to this film is that it, um, it shows where the careers of all the FBI agents go after the successful arrest of Moses Al Shabazz. And then the life sentence, all of the sentences imposed upon the, the stars of six. Yeah, well, I mean, they, could, they are functionally love sentences. They're probably all in their yeah, late well, 20s, early 30s, and they're all given about 30 years. Yeah, exactly. And I thought the, the, one of the ones that really hit hard was that the wife, and I looked into this, like, apparently, like, things like this, again, have happened. Like you said, it says at the beginning of 100 True Stories, like, people's wives have been sentenced for supporting terrorist organizations. And I was like, this is actually fucked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't say whether it would be better to go into this. I mean, obviously, if you've listened this far, we fucked it. But I couldn't say whether it's honestly better to go into this film not knowing about this tactic, or if you do already know about it, so you can kind of follow what's going on I think, with a bit more... I, I mean, I don't... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, but we can compare, because I mean, I went in not knowing about this, and to me, it was like a horror show. Like, I, I was witnessing, like like I said, like, the the worst excesses of like western policing and like surveillance and like and unhe- like oh, yeah office attitudes but what did what did you feel i, I guess you felt it was comparatively pedestrian because you're already uh, not pedestrian it felt it felt a lot more inevitable okay yeah i can like see it that. felt less I, it, I, I guess the initial shock value is not there cuz i already knew where what it was they, going what they do yeah uh, but it's still i think it's a i think it's a good film i think the the, the, I, it's not quite as funny as I think I was expecting, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It might be just because I've got far too high standards for a Chris Morris, where I'm like, ha, 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 and actually he's quite a serious man sometimes. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. But I, for me, it felt more like a like a slow motion car crash. <laughs> it's like you can you see what's happening. Like, you know, I could kind of know what the beats are going to be, what's going to happen, but it doesn't make any less yeah. awful. No, and I think that the performances really carry that through a lot. Yeah, massively, and I think yeah, I think that's what probably makes it engage with both of us. Is like if you know what's going to happen, like you do, then it's got to be a genuine empathy for these characters or a genuine disdain as they as they commit their sordid dance towards the horrible conclusion. The Star of Six are not in any way vaguely interested in any of this, and it is just being led on, and that is pretty much how it goes in real life. You have a little, you know, obviously real life's always a bit muddier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think I think it was Liberty City Seven. Like when they first put in their order with the ISIS catalogue or whatever, they didn't order any explosives. Oh, they were just like, oh yeah, we need you know work boots and goggles and stuff, and it never even really occurred to them to get stuff for making bombs. Well, that's because well, from my understanding, is, is was that because they intended to level the tower with like a tidal wave or something or like the, uh, they were gonna the they, were gonna, they were gonna flood Chicago by dropping the Sears Tower into it. I think. Oh, okay. But either way, yeah. So that, I mean, the Sears Tower wasn't dropping because of explosives. It was. Uh... But I think they were gonna they were gonna blow it up. They weren't gonna pull it down with the horses. Oh, okay. Oh, the bit I read was that their plan involved storming Chicago with horses and destroying the Sears Tower, but it never made it said how they were gonna do that. I assumed it was like oh, I assumed yeah. it was like the crane where they were gonna beseech someone to do it. For oh, be- <laughs> beseech the horses to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, See, I kind of yeah, particularly maybe the, the Liberty Seven is that they were convicted by a jury. Like you can these things go to to trial quite a lot of the time, and then they still lose. Wow. Well. Yeah, Whereas cause... in the film, they do plea bargains yeah. and so have no trial. And the idea that you can be sentenced to 30 years in prison without a trial is in itself quite sinister. Definitely. Yeah. No, I, I thought that was all. The, that that ending was really perfect. And again, like, some, like yeah, like a, a really good use of after credits silence just as these. Yeah. And again, I don't know if you saw this. I really, and we watched it in a, like a, a art, art, what would you call it? Like a... Art house cinema? I don't know. What it, it would. Is. I think. It, I think the watershed in Bristol would like to itself thought of as a independent art supporting cinema. There yeah. you go. So yeah, we watched it in that, and like just a couple of like the reactions from the audience behind us were really funny. I'm not sure if you heard them. But, no, like, one, I was. One person, no, I was. One, I was reading. I can't. I can't multitask. Uh, one person. One person <laughs> sighed. One person went, "Oh dear." I was like, "Yeah, fucking." Oh. oh dear. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh dear, it's quite sweet. Yeah, I guess so. I was like, yeah, that that sums it up. <laughs> oh dear, um, it's a very English reaction to <laughs> definitely. But yeah, to some men having their life ruined to further three people's careers. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Oh, I bet they went home and told you know told the husband about that. It's just like oh, saw something really horrible in the cinema. Oh dear, it really bummed me out. <laughs> Do you want to? Yeah, let's. Do you want to find this crispy pancake? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, everything's better now. Yeah, yeah I think. Cup of tea. But yeah, I mean, obviously, if you've got this far and haven't watched it, you're a maniac. But we'd suggest that you watch it. I mean, it would be quite weird if you listened to this sort of about twelve minutes in, then watched it, and then came back. Yeah, all that. Yeah, whichever, whichever way you be... decide to watch it. I hope you join. Play us it next. alongside at like half speed, so we're like a director's commentary. That would be amazing. Yeah, but really slow. I mean, this will be about thirty minutes long, so if you distend us by like a third, then we'll talk over the whole thing. It will sound like we're in immense pain. So do that. I love to. I do love to be distended by a third. <laughs> That's what they say about me down at the docks. It's going to be on my gravestone. <laughs> but my gravestone's also going to be distended by a third, so it's going to be really long. <laughs> <laughs> really distorted. It's like he really committed to that bit. Yeah. Well, thank you very Bye. much. Bye. You've been checked for traps. I haven't been. Wait, I am? I, yeah. I Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.